there we go, and Control J. It can be one object, it doesn't need to be more than that. And now what I can do is basically Shift D and drag it into the next hole. Shift D, drag it into the next hole. Actually, before I do that, let me just check the materials. Does it have a material applied? No, it doesn't. So I'm going to just undo all the copying that I did. I'm going to apply a quick material to it, make it gray, dark gray. Density, yep. Yeah. And now I'm going to Shift D and drag it to this hole. Shift D, drag it to the next one. Shift D, where's the next one? Okay, I can kind of see it in the outline there. So you want to make sure it's as precise as, not as precise as possible, but you want to make it look normal, you know. You don't want part of it going through the walls there. Uh, where's the last one? Let's see. I thought I had five holes. Apparently not. Well, anyways, let's get back to our grid. The problem is it's all squares. They're all similar. I guess I counted wrong that one time. Anyways, yeah, so this is going to be our basic, our very basic, uh, hazard. And now the next thing, yeah, obviously the player can't pass over these. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be cheap if I'm going to be blocking all the pathways because he has no other way to get to the end zone. If you notice that I've closed all of these, so you can't really get around. So what we're going to do is add the next thing, which is going to be a platform that moves up and down. Uh, it's going to be timed, so it gives the player a chance to... Um, to move over. So, sorry, cube, add a cube, enter. There's our cube. You want to make sure it's the grid size. So, I'm going to go top view, orthographic, zoom in. And I can actually see my, look at my texture here. That's going to give me basically how it looks, but it doesn't matter. If you're not using the same kind of uh, texture, just go, whoops, press G, move it here and you want to have this resemble the size of these platforms or even make it a tiny bit larger wouldn't really make a huge huge difference place it properly there we go so this is going to be our basic platform and let's see now what I'm going to do is Um, scale it down. It's actually orthographic, that's why it's kind of weird. I'm zoom out, scale it down to make it kind of flat, not too, too flat. And you re <coughs> excuse me, reset. And we're going to give it the white grid texture. So, obviously I am using GLSL, so I will need to apply a material. Moving platform... And we don't really need to give this a name. If you you should if you're making a full game, you should give objects names and p properties if they will need them. Uh, mainly because you want to keep your game organized. Uh, so new, but I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't know. It's just a tutorial. It's not really something that I gotta pay a lot of attention to. Okay, so it automatically added the texture. So I'm fine. Just make sure you add the material properly. You should know how to do this. So I need, don't need to walk you uh, step by step. Yeah, so basically we have our grid. Uh, one thing I'm going to change is uh, uh, in the specular section here, you want to choose in, change the intensity to zero so that there wouldn't be any spec. I kind of noticed it there. <coughs> okay. So there is our basic platform. You can see it fits pretty well. Um, and obviously it, there ha it has to be a little surprising. Maybe not too surprising, but a little surprising. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is, if you notice, I'm going to hit Z. And if you notice, uh, in this section here it says we're on frame 0. I'm just going to move this to frame 1. Okay. And I'm going to hit I. And this is basically a basic animation. It's not the best kind of animation, but it works for this case. 
so I'm going to be in uh, wireframe mode. I'm going to hit I, location. Okay, so this saves the 